and welcome to my channel. Well, what I like to call these are the Boker family. Uh, because I usually have most of them with me. Sometimes not this one. But most of the time at least these three guys. This one here is my traveling Boker. Um, it, for the last couple of days I've actually been wearing this case. And, uh, <clears throat> after wearing one of these all day, you know, on your hip and everything, you realize the buck, uh, the buck 110 isn't that heavy. <laughs> Seven ounces isn't that heavy compared to like a pound and a quarter or whatever this is. But, I was just doing that just to see what it was like. You know, if you if you had to depend on it. Now, the case is a sturdy knife. You've got that fixed blade, you know, and you know you've got a sturdy tool in your hand. Um, these are aluminum handled. They, you know, they feel as solid as aluminum is. They work, basically. You know, as long as you're not going to go batoning on them and all that other crazy stuff. They work for having a fairly long reach. Um, they're flat, they're affordable, um, now if you can't afford, I mean, not can't afford, but if, if you're not allowed to have autos, I understand, you know, like your country or your state or whatever won't even allow you to possess them or whatever, um, maybe one day in the future the laws will change, you know, if you, um, get around to electing officials that listen to the people if the people say hey we're not afraid of these you know it's no more scary than any other kind of knife but i find these things very useful now out of all of them the one that for me that fires the fastest i've been uh, oiling this guy and trying to clean him out because there's a lot of there was a lot of pocket lint in there now what i do is i take an acid brush i don't know if i got one lying around here I should, but I don't. There should be an acid brush around here. But anyways, just you know, it's that metal brush with the camel hair and everything, and I and I feed it all into there, and then I just go back and forth. And another good way to clean these out a lot of times is compressed air. You can if you got an air compressor, you can instead of having to take it all apart. But they do develop a patina. Now another thing that I I got recently was I have the mini. And I thought, you know, this would probably be the perfect neck knife size because I've got a neck carry, you know, a Kydex carry one for one of these, the regular size. But you kind of like feel it flopping around on you and stuff like this. A smaller one would be a little bit better, you know, if you just need a knife and everything for... A, a, as a neck knife type of thing just depends on what you like and stuff the pr the issue is again the retention i usually have to grab it like this and pull get it to come out now yes you can you can heat them up and uh fix the kydex but i'd never had you know when i was married i always had a wife always had a hair dryer but i never had one so i always used their, hers and uh, after I got divorced, I never bought one, you know, because I just let my hair dry in the air. I don't need to, you know, hair dry. But those things come in useful hair dryers. So naturally, when I was walking through my trip past the dumpster one dumpster one day, I found actually two of these that were being thrown away. And this was a better one got different speeds and everything that's the voltage setting right there 125 and 250 um but yeah this thing works fine you know people throw away like i said people throw away all kinds of, and guess what else i found when i was there too man a brand new box of crayons made in china <clears throat> so I found that and this, this too. There was a bunch of stuff that somebody was throwing away. Now, I've seen these at Walmart. 
they sell for they sell for like five ten dollars there's nothing wrong with it i put it through the dishwasher just in case it had some contaminants on it uh, but it's it's a double walled you can use it like like this to drink out of but i the edges are not sharp you could drink out of it like this just like this but it's designed for an aluminum can like a soda can or a beer can or something like that it's like a a koozie you know, that's what this little rubber lip here is for it's like a seal yeah throw it away gonna throw it away it's gonna toss it away I bet it's made in China. I bet it's made in China. We can't find out. We just have a code here. It was probably on the packaging. You don't always stamp it on the item. But still. Yeah, so. There you go. That's that's my thing on the Boker family. Oh, and this one's cool too, the little sub. It's got more of a full finger grip. I think if you had to choose between the two, I'd go with this guy a little bit better. And it's about the size of a dragonfly, as far as like blade, you know, length and everything else. It's competing with the dragonfly. So if you like a dragonfly, you'll like the Boker Sub. Now there is one other size. See, this is an XXL. There may one, maybe two, but. There's a large, they don't make them anymore. I think it was a Blade Ops exclusive. And because this is an XXL, there must have been an XL, right? I don't know. It's hard to figure out with these things. But they're inexpensive. Like I said, compared to other autos and compared to other stuff, you know, like I was just watching Zach's stuff thing on the, um, the new Benchmade out the front one. It's 275 to 300 which compared to like a Microtech and stuff, you know, that's still a pretty good price, but that's not within my range. This thing was $65. It was like 60 or 65 Most of these were around 40 to $50, depending on, you know, the model you get and the steel and everything. Offset works fine for me on this. Just saying. These are like D2. This is D2. This is D2. This is D2. Uh, I'll say, pull this guy out of this little container. Well, what do we got here? D2. This guy's D2 also. So yeah, they're all they're all fun little knives. The Boker family. There you go. They're they're a happy little family. They get carried. They get used a lot. Usually I reach for my pocket if I don't... <laughs> if I reach for my right-hand pocket, because I'm right-handed, it's usually right there at the seam and everything. If I don't find this guy, I'm going to find one of the other ones, uh, usually sitting there. And then in a cargo pocket, this one will be in a cargo pocket. This one will be around my neck. And if I'm walking or if I'm going out anywhere and I want a long-reach knife... Like a get away from me knife. Get away from me. Um, that's this guy. So yeah, there you go. If you can afford them, or you're allowed to have them, or you wondered about them or anything like that, I'd recommend them, man, because they're a lot of fun. They're inexpensive. You do... I, I put some of that synthetic oil in there. Toby sent me the zero friction because there's so much of it. I, I put a lot, you know, with a little needle in there. I'm letting it sling out and stuff. But, yeah, you just got to keep that area right around the button lock and, and right here up on top. Let me see if it will zoom in. That little notch, you want to keep the, you want to keep lint out of that because that's, that's where it locks In an open position. Ah, yeah. See, that, that button didn't come all the way up, and it didn't. Recently, that's why I'm starting to clean it. Recently, see, there's a plunger over here, and there's a tapered button. And it goes in, it hits in that little notch. 
And if you get lint and pocket lint over and stuff over here, it can obstruct it from locking in place. Usually you just have to tap it and stuff like that. But that's why it's a good idea to, you know, look over your knives and stuff. Also, um, Jersey Knife Guy was talking about D2 rusting and everything. And just out of curiosity, I checked mine. I, I sharpened this, but I had I had rust spots on my D2 up here. First time I've had D2 rust. Now, this has got like a DLT or whatever type of coating on it. And it's not rusting, you know, on that, of course. But uh, I've never had D2 until this time rust on me but this one was is carried on my belt and um right there by my waist and we've had a lot of humidity <laughs> we're getting wind coming in from the south and that's coming from the gulf of mexico and yeah it brings with it heat and humidity and those two things will attack uh any non-stainless steel and d2 is close to stainless but it doesn't qualify it, it will rust it's it's not quite there with its chromium content or something. Anyway, there you go. That's my little update of the Boker family. They're all happy. i got to redistribute them across my body now. Uh, except for that one. I'm not going anywhere right now. i can put that one somewhere else. But yeah, they're, they're fun. They're fun and fast. You know, you need something. Uh, you need the blade to come out. Now, it's not any... I don't think it's any faster than a than a flipper, you know. I don't think you're gaining anything by that, but you have the positiveness of it. Of every time you push that button, that thing's gonna fire out and be ready. You don't have a a weak detent like you can run into. Um, it can also be used ambidextrously. You can have like this one. Sometimes I do that. Even though this is, they do make left hand models. These are not reversible pocket clips you know but they occasionally they make left hand models they sell out pretty quick where the buttons are right here and the clips over there um, but all you got to do instead of using your thumb to fire it use your index finger and it'll still work closing it you know might be a little trickier but yeah so they're they're semi ambidextrous you know you just have to train yourself that I'm going to use my index finger instead of my thumb, you know, to fire it. And this is small enough that it can do little tasks. All right. Stop repeating yourself. There you go. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.